I should have done this months ago, but I need to do a big pantry clean out in preparation for the new stuff we're going to get this year. I was feeling really sick with being pregnant and so I just put it off and put it off and put it off and now it can't be put off any longer and I need to clear out some of this stuff that I have in the pantry, get it organized and get it prepped and ready for this upcoming season. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of our pumpkins from last year. Yes, these are like nine months old, but they're so good. I, I did lose a couple of them along the way throughout the year, that does usually happen. But for the most part, all of them are still good, but I want to make them into pumpkin puree that we can freeze and save for the next year. Cause I'm not planning on growing these again this year. I had plenty. I still should have a tiny bit of pumpkin puree in my freezer. So this will last us through this next year, which will be good because I'm trying to keep things as minimized as possible this year in the garden. After a lot of years of trial and error, I finally figured out a way of making pumpkin puree that works really well for me and it's really pretty easy. I cut the pumpkin in half and then scrape out the seeds and the strings. And you don't have to be exact about getting out the strings either. A lot of those get left in there and it's not a big deal. So what I do is I put a sheet of parchment paper down on a baking tray and then I put all of the pumpkins on the trays facing down. And then I take the pumpkins and put them into the oven, which has been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is where two ovens is definitely coming in handy because I can do them all at once. After putting the pumpkins in the oven, I set my timer for an hour and then I check at an hour and every half hour after that until they are completely soft. While the pumpkins are roasting in the oven, I thought it would be a good time to go through some of my apples that are left in the pantry as well. Some of these have started to go soft and it's mostly the Jonathan variety. My Arkansas black apples are actually, most of them are still in really good condition. But once the apples do start to go soft, nobody really wants to eat them anymore fresh. So I decided instead maybe I would try some apple juice and use my steam juicer. I've never done this before. And I don't know how it's gonna work with older apples like this, but Figure it's worth a try, it's better to use them than to waste them. So we're gonna try this. If I have enough extra, I am going to can it. According to the recipe book for the steam juicer, you do not have to cut the apples or do anything. You can just put them straight in there. I am actually gonna cut mine because I'm worried that some of them may be rotting on the inside and I don't want any bad flavors in there. So I'm just gonna cut them in half just in case to check and make sure there's no spots or anything I should be worried about before I stick them in the steam juicer. The steam juicer is still pretty new to me. I used it for my grape juice the last two years, but I have never used it for anything else. So the apples are new. And the nice part about it is that once it's all assembled, you can go and do something else uh, as it's heating up and doing its thing, which is so nice. So I was able to go back and do the pumpkin stuff while that was going. A game changer when making pumpkin puree is to make sure you drain out any excess liquid that you have. Some pumpkin varieties lend themselves better to this and won't have a lot of excess. This is Long Island cheese, so it does have a little bit of extra liquid. So I do like to put it in a colander and then strain out the liquid. I put a bowl underneath and just leave it there for a while and that makes for a really good thick pumpkin puree. Hot. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, ow. Should've got gloves? Yeah, probably. I had kind of mentioned that I wasn't gonna can any apple juice unless I had a lot. And as I was making it, I changed my mind and decided that we were gonna save one jar and then can whatever was left. So 
I actually thought I was going to make a whole lot more than this just based on what the recipe said, but it only made three quarts. And we tested out about a half a quart prior to me filling these jars uh, just to make sure it was good. And it was a little less sweet than I anticipated uh, because I'm so used to apple juice being so, so sweet. And I think just because this is not as concentrated and I was using older apples. So I did add like two tablespoons of sugar to each jar, plus a little bit of lemon juice. The recipe didn't call for that, but I just did it anyway. The recipe that I'm using for the apple juice comes from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. That book is definitely my go-to for any sort of simple canning recipe just for a guideline to make sure everything you're doing is safe and that you're processing it the correct amount of time and the, using the correct methods. While I was working on the apple juice and let this sit for a while, I ended up putting all of the pumpkins over this one colander that I have. I only have one, which is why I did this. Otherwise I would have done it in two. And then I put a big bowl underneath to catch all the liquid and you can see just how much liquid is there. It is a lot. So it really helps a lot to get that out of there so you get a nice concentrated pumpkin puree flavor. The next step is to take off the skins from the cooked pumpkin and generally it's really pretty easy. You can almost just peel the skin right off. Sometimes I do have to get in there with the spoon and kind of scrape it off. It just kind of depends on how long you cooked it and your pumpkin variety. And then I put it into a blender and I puree it that way. I have done this in a food processor as well, but I really like the blender because it gets a super smooth texture, although it is really thick. So my blender didn't like it very much when I was doing that. Pumpkin puree is one thing that you cannot safely home can. And so we prefer to freeze ours in the quart size bags. And then I just put how many cups I put in each bag so that when I use pumpkin in a recipe, it's really easy for me to just see, okay, I have two cups in this bag and use that in the recipe. Two cups is about what you would find in a can at the store. So that is why I do that amount. My next task for cleaning out the pantry is to chop up and freeze dry all of the onions that are still good. I have several that are starting to sprout in the pantry, some that are soft, some that are not. The ones that are not soft, but still have a little green sprout, they are actually still pretty good to eat. But the ones that are soft, I'm not using those and I wanna make sure I make the most of what I do have left. So I'm gonna peel and chop and put them on the freeze dryer trays. This will be the first time that I have freeze dried onions before, just because they keep for so long in the pantry. I mean, it's the end of April right now and I have not had a need to freeze dry them as of yet, but now that they're starting to sprout, I do wanna preserve what I can what's left of them. And I also bought a new little veggie chopper thing. Some of you guys mentioned that to me. I figured this might be worth it because I have so many onions to do and I'd really like to make short work of this job. So I'm gonna try that out. <laughs> This little tool is way cooler than I thought it would be and such a time saver. I should have gotten one of these long, long ago. It, I think it only costs like $30 or something and that was totally worth it even in this one use and for how much chopping I do, I think it is definitely going to be a worthwhile investment. So shout out and thank you to those who told me about it and I'll leave a link in the video description if anybody wants to save themselves a lot of time too. I was testing out different sizes. They have like a larger size and a smaller size chopper, but I ended up just using the larger size for most of it. 
I have eight freeze dryer trays, which is really great because you can do bigger batches and then just freeze them all at once instead of just doing like the four shown here. When you freeze eight, you can just do one batch in the freeze dryer and then when that's done, you can just immediately put in the next batch and you save yourself a lot of time that way. We decided to do a long-term storage solution for these diced freeze-dried onions. And what we used was the Mylar bags with the oxygen absorbers. This should last 25 or so years. I just wanted some backup and I knew that if I just stored them in a jar, I may or may not use them uh, within the year just because we always have some fresh or stored and they're not, it's not usually an item that I'm without. So unless of course I have like a bad harvest year, then I would dig into these bags, but trying to be optimistic and thinking that we will be able to get a good harvest of onions this year. So I'm just doing the long-term storage instead. After these were all sealed, we store them in plastic bins on the top shelf of our pantry. And I realized after doing this that we need a couple more of those because we are almost out of space. It has been really nice to be able to get some of these things checked off my list. I still have a lot of preserving that I need to do and cooking with some of the items in my pantry. And I also want to clean and organize it. But with the gardening going on right now and everything else, this was what I was able to accomplish in about a week. So definitely planning on sharing more with you guys. So stay tuned for that. There will be another video or maybe even two um, as I wrap up this project.